And some of the people of Jerusalem were saying, isn't this the guy whom they're seeking to kill? <laughs> isn't this the guy they're seeking to kill? See, it's not paranoia if they're really out to get you. Uh, and uh, they just said, you're a nutcase. But Yeshua said, oh, no, 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 I'm not paranoid. I know who's really trying to kill me. Look, he's speaking plainly, publicly. And the leaders, they're saying nothing to him. Now, that's very confusing. The rulers, who we thought wanted to kill him, well, do they not really know this man is the Christ? Is the do they really think he's the Messiah? They don't really think this is the Messiah, do they? And that's why they're not killing. We know they wanted to kill. They talked a big game, but when he shows up, they're not doing anything. Maybe they are convinced he really is Mashiach. However, that doesn't make sense, on the other hand, because we know where this man is from, Nazareth. Wherever the Christ may come, no one knows where he is from, this uh, uh, pulls a tradition, one of the traditions about the Messiah, that when he comes, he will come suddenly, he will appear from nowhere uh, and deliver the Jewish people. Uh, and so they want to get into a theological argument now. Well, then Jesus says, enough, enough is enough. Knock it off. Yeshua cried out in the temple, teaching and saying, you both know me and where I'm from. Cut through the smoke screen. You know me. I've been around for a while, and that shouldn't be an issue for you. Whether or not I'm Messiah, because I've been around, because the things I've done are amazing. Unprecedented. You know me, and you know where I'm from. And I have not come of myself. But he who sent me is true. Whom you do not know. I'll tell you what you don't know. You don't know the one who sent me. You think you know God? Think again. I, however, know him. You think you know, I know You don't know him like I know him. I know him because I'm from him. And he sent me. Some are repeating some of the same themes that we've seen over and over again. Right? In John, Yeshua is the sent one, the one whose source is God. He leaves the very presence of his Father to be sent on a mission. He is the sent one, the one who descends from heaven to come to the world, to come to earth, came to his own, his own did not know him. Right? But I am from him, and he sent me. So they were seeking to seize him. Can you see the diversity of opinion? That is, uh, Jesus is such a, a hot topic. There's such a diversity of opinion. He's, uh, he's really uh, uh, turning a lot of people on and turning a lot of Very divisive figure. And they were seeking to seize him. And no one laid his hand on him. What do you mean they're seeking to seize him and no one laid it? So they want to seize him but they stay back. They want to grab him, but they keep their hands to themselves. It's almost as if the crowd, even the ones who are the most antagonistic toward Yeshua at this point, it's almost as if they're not in control of their own desires, as if somebody is restraining them. And then, of course, you read then, the reason they didn't lay their hands on him is because Yeshua's hour had not yet come. The hour that is to come in John is Yeshua's glorification, is Yeshua's suffering, his agony, his triumph over death, and his, uh, his uh, victory over death and glorification. That's his, his, his hour has not yet come. And no one is going to crucify the Messiah before his time. The Lord, his Father, is going to see to that. And, you know, I call this whole interaction, and you see this, you'll see it throughout John as well, this visceral hatred and disgust, and you can try to, you can try to really 
um, uh, psychoanalyze it and, 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 and try to get into it and say, well, it's because of theological issues or because they really thought that Yeshua was, uh, was breaking Torah or he really was a threat to the Jewish people. Or he really was, you can think of it on a sociological level, on a cultural level, on so many different levels. But I think ultimately the, the level of absolute antagonism that Yeshua engenders among the Jewish leadership and eventually the crowd itself, I think should be called Yeshua derangement syndrome.